Hi, welcome to Fish on Fridays. I'm Al McCauley, and once again, we are coming to you from Emmitsburg, Maryland, specifically at the National Shrine of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, the first American-born saint. She's a wonderful lady. There's a lot to see on the grounds here, so come along for the ride. We're going to enter the Basilica that's dedicated to St. Elizabeth Ann Seton in a few moments, but before we go in, I want to stop at this statue. This is the first statue that was erected in the United States dedicated to St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, and it was done in the year 1950. We wanted to stop right before we enter the Basilica and show you what's above the doors there. It's the coat of arms for Pope Paul VI. Pope Paul VI is going to die in 1978, but in 1975, he was the Pope that canonized Elizabeth Ann Seton. That's why we see his symbols represented here. We are inside the Basilica of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. It was begun in 1965 as a chapel for the Daughters of Charity, which is the religious order she started. And in 1991, it was granted minor basilica status by the church. Its beauty is just breathtaking, and I hope the images do it justice. What you see here is the actual banner, the painting depicting Elizabeth Ann Seton that was unfurled and shown on display at the Vatican at the massive celebration for her canonization in 1975. In the museum at the shrine here, we learn about the three miracles in particular that were attributed to Elizabeth Ann Seton after her death. And we have our friend Al here, he's one of the tour guides, and he's going to tell us a little bit about that. Carl Kalin, he was a construction worker uh, in New York. He wasn't even Catholic. Uh, he had a very rare disease. Uh, uh, five other people before him had it, and they all died. And he's in the hospital, and the sisters have begun to pray for him. They're putting him, taking Mother Seton's relic, putting it on him, taking it off with him. And uh, after two or three days like this, he, he recovered. Wow. Um, the other one, Ann O'Neill, she's a little five-year-old girl. She was in a hospital in Baltimore. He had acute lymphatic leukemia. It kept going downhill, going downhill. The doctor says, nothing more we can do with this. You have maybe two weeks left to live, and that was all. So there was a big prayer chain that went up, praying to Mother Seat, and the nurses and all the people in Baltimore knew her, and she recovered, completely recovered. Sister uh, Gertrude Kersendorfer, she was in 1935, she was a daughter of charity. She had uh, uh, in, uh, a little fat, she had um, uh, pancreatitis. Okay. And uh, which you don't, you don't recover from pancreatitis, but the sister prayed for her. And within a few days, she was completely healed. Wow, that's wonderful. So those are the three. There are many more miracles, but these are the three the church accepted okay. and put to her canvas. Thanks so much, Al. I appreciate the information. Inside this basilica is the crypt of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, her final resting place. It's an incredibly moving place to be. St. Elizabeth Ann Seton was born two years before the revolution started in this country in 1774, and she was Episcopalian. She married into wealth. But, but think about this life. She was married, she had five children, her husband's going to die, and she's going to lose her family business all before the year, uh, age of 30 years old. A remarkably strong woman, though. She converted to Catholicism, which really put her on the outskirts of ter in terms of society and her family and friends because Catholicism in the United States at that time was really oppressed and looked down on. She moved from New York to here, to Maryland, because Maryland was a state that was tolerant of all religions, in particular Catholics. The first Catholic bishop was here. If you're old enough to remember the Baltimore Catechism, it's because Baltimore, Maryland. Maryland was the hub, if you will, for Catholics in this country. So she flourished here. We know that she started the first Catholic school for girls, which eventually became co-ed, and that spread throughout the United States to the Catholic parochial school system that we have today. This is one of the reasons that she is the patron saint of Catholic schools throughout the country, really throughout the world. A remarkable woman. She's going to die at the age of 47, but just an incredible powerhouse. Somebody who started a religious order called the Daughters of Charity that was dedicated to serving the poor, particularly in the area of education. A remarkable woman, a terrific saint, someone to really remember and emulate to the best of our ability, and someone to be really proud of in the United States. It's, it's not fashionable to talk about her faith a lot in this country, but boy, as the first canonized American saint, somebody to really look to and celebrate. 